Oh yeah, hi there. So I'm going to talk about setting up Svelte Fire and I'll try to do it in these six steps. So step one is set up your local. So we're just going to come here and get the template um, down here, Svelte Fire dash template, or you can just uh, use those right there. So we're going to deget this change directory into your folder and then npm install. So I've done that already and you may need to npm audit fix uh, if you want to fix these. And then I open it up over here and I'm running the server <coughs> with npm run dev. Okay, so that's step one. So I have my local set up. Next thing is make your Firebase project. So once you have your uh, all that set up, come here, firebase.google.com, get started. You're going to click start a new project once this loads. And then you're going to put Google Analytics, yes or no, if you want. And then it's going to ask for a... Um, a default or a, an account to use, and I just put default account. So this is taking a while. I already did all that actually, um, so I'll just skip that. And once it is been created, it'll look like this. So continue. And here I am in the project that I made. After you have made the project, you're going to need an app to it. So this Firebase could be for anything like iOS, Android, but we want a web app. So we're going to add that here. And I'll just call it again, felt fire um, YouTube practice. Um, and if you want, you can set up hosting. So I'll just click that because we'll want to deploy it at the end, which I forgot to add to these steps. So that would be step seven. Okay, so um, don't do this. That's just if you aren't using Svelte Fire or Svelte or if you're just using a normal thing, a normal web page, make sure you have the Firebase tools installed. So do that if you haven't done that. And then we'll do this later, but you'll need to do all this here to deploy. Okay, but for now you can just continue to, uh, to console. So next thing is to click on here in order to get our config for our, um, so step two, make it. So we made it, now we're going to add a web app, which we just did, and we're going to put the config in here. So it's a bit confusing, but click on your web app, and then come down here to CDN. And right here is your config. I guess if you click config, yeah, it's right there, same thing. And then come down here where it says insert Firebase credentials, and put them right there. Cool, so we'll save that. Now the next step is to make a Firestore. So come to database, and this will take a bit to set up as well. I wonder if this, oh no, that's something else. Okay, and then create database. And we're gonna start in production mode. So you can start in test mode, or you can start in production mode, but let's just Make sure we're using good practices from the beginning. Uh, choose wherever you want. Um, I guess preferably choose the same time zone that you are in. That's probably easiest, uh, but it's something that you cannot change. So it's provisioning Cloud Firestore. Um, once that is done, I'm going to put these. Let me uncomment them so I can copy. These are going to be the rules that I put into uh, the Firestore. And just to explain what they mean, uh, version 2, so I don't know what version 1 is, but this is version 2 apparently. Service cloud.firestore. I also am not sure what that is, but I guess you need it at, on the outside. So match, it'll match your databases. And this says like whatever database you're using, uh, it's like a variable. So your database, because uh, you could have multiple databases, and then the documents in your database. And then it's going to match posts slash post ID. And this here says any uh, documents underneath. Oh, this should probably just be one T. Any documents inside this post ID. So post ID could be anything based on who the user is. Um, that's how the Svelte Fire template is set up so that the user ID is used for the post ID. So we're gonna come to rules and paste these in. And if you want to do, you should do unit tests if this is production. I should say also that I'm not an expert on this and you want to be very careful uh, doing anything that I say in production. 
Um, this is just me tinkering around with it and it working. So just be careful and just um, do more research if you want to do this in a production app, especially with sensitive data. Okay, so I put the rules in there. I updated it. Cool. So made the fire store. So that's done. Okay, allow anonymous sign-in and email sign-in. So right now, if we come to the app, and let me open the console just so you can see. So if I click sign in anonymously, um, there's an error because we haven't allowed this sign in method in our um, app. So here it's authentication, and I'm going to allow anonymous authentication, so sign in method, as well as email and password authentication. So anonymous, this is if you're just playing around with the template, this is all you need. But I'm going to show you at the end how to do email password also. So email, uh, we'll do it like this, email link, password list sign in. Uh, I'm not going to do that for now. And save that. OK, so now it should be good to go. Um, the app should work now. I'm going to refresh it. And I'm going to go to the database so you can see how it gets updated um, as we interact with this little app. OK, so there's nothing in here right now. Uh, I sign in anon anonymously, and it gives me this user ID. So this is my user ID. I can sign out if I want. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to create a document. So I've created this document, um, and maybe it won't um, load right away. But let's do a few things. So you can add a comment. So this document is just uh, just kind of a dummy uh, like blog post or something. You can add comments to it. Me too, me too. That's all you can say. If you want, you could put an input and have it bound to this, and then you could change it or something. Uh, but you'll have to figure that out. OK, so let's refresh this to see if it's been updated with. So these are supposed to, these are, these are going into the database, and then they're being fetched as well from the database. Uh, while that's loading, I'll show you I can sign out. And I can sign in again. And now I have a different um, ID. And I can create documents like this, add a comment. OK, uh, don't know what's being so slow. But we'll just have to be patient. OK, so you'll see post has been created. And there's two user IDs. So this was the first one, and this was the second one. And then if I click here, comments, you'll see that there are two com or just one comment. Uh, and it should just say, like, so this is the blog post. I like Svelte. And the text is me too. OK, so you can see that it's being updated and being made uh, in real time. And I'll sign out again. So last thing I'm going to show you is um, how to add email sign into template. Before I do that, though, let me just kind of explain what's going on. So. Firebase app, that's just all your credentials passed into the Firebase app, uh, this outside wrapper. Um, this is just some HTML. OK, so this will be the user. So if there's, so it seems to rely a lot on slots. So this slot will show up if the user is signed out. So let user let auth um, user ID. So all of that. So get a Firestore. So here we have a doc and then the path. So if it isn't. Um, I believe if it doesn't already exist, then it'll create it. So that's how posts got created in our Svelte Fire uh, database, this post collection. Um, and then it goes on to, so slot for loading, slot for fallback is this. OK, so there's quite a bit going on here. Uh, you can tinker with stuff and try to figure out what's going on. So here's the text that gets added to the comment. This you could bind to an input if you want to be able to type in a different text, something like that. Um, anyway, but I'm going to show you how to add in the uh, logging in with email and password. So it's fairly simple. So Firebase.auth create user with email and password. This is how to sign someone up. So I'm going to create a function down here called sign up. And this is just a messy way to do it. You'll want to handle errors in your own way. Uh, I'm just trying to show you how to set it all up. So create user with email and password, email password. So I'm going to have a let email equal this. And I'm going to have a let 
password this and these are going to be bound to an input okay so there's function sign up and then I'm going to copy this you could probably make this um, almost like one function or something but just for simplicity I'm going to say login and then rather than create user with email and password it'll be sign in with email and password and if you want you can put a dot then function right here and do something um, when it's success and here is the error so if it doesn't work for example if the username's already been taken or I guess the email then you could handle it somehow here okay but for now I'm just gonna do that and that should work I just need to add a input for username and password so where am I gonna put that let's see howdy user so this here lets them sign in anonymously rather than that um, Okay, so here, if they're signed out, we'll have two buttons. There'll be one that is sign up, and this one will be login. Okay, and on click, it'll run our sign up function. Uh, sorry, right here, on click equals sign up. And for our login function, It'll be the log uh, login, yeah. So login, and then right here we're going to have two inputs. So I'll have this is just quick and dirty um, email, and then a be a break input type equals text, and we're gonna bind the value to email, so that. Um, that variable up there that I put and then type equals password sorry this should be email not text bind value equals password so these are input types they don't have to match here this is just uh, the type okay so and let me just add password okay let's see what this looks like and see if it works Hopefully it does. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this. Sorry, my computer's being kind of slow. And after this step will be to deploy. Did I write that down? Let me just write that. Deploy app. Okay, so... Cool, so this looks really bad, but email is supposed to be right here. So I'm just going to do a at a.com. And then for my password, it has to be at least six, otherwise, you get an error. I'm going to do a, 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 a. I'm going to sign up. Cool, so now I'm here again. If you want to see the email rather than the user ID, um, where is it? Um, right here, you can do user.email, actually, so that will work. So then it should say a at a um, dot com. So here I can create a document. Okay, it's reloading. Okay, so since I was already logged in, it just automatically logged me in. And I can add a comment, add comment like that. Um, and then I can sign out. And now you'll see if I want to, I can a at a dot com. And my password a a a a a a. I log in and I have all the data from before. So if I come here and do like b at b.com and I make my password b, 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 I try to log in, uh, there'll be an error, right? Because there's no, but you'll have to handle, handle this yourself to let the user know what's going on. So I can sign up, create document and all that. So, um, yep, so that's how you do that. I tested it so that, so with that rule that I put in there, B should not be able to access A's stuff, and A should not be able to access B's stuff. So this would be good if there's no interaction between users, but um, you want to save data for a user, for example, and let them log in from different devices. Okay, so the last thing to do is to um, deploy it. So Firebase login, and I'm, I'm already logged in. I forget what happens if you're not logged in. 
but uh, you sh yeah, you should be able to do that. So Firebase init, and here we want a, um, so I'm pressing space for Firestore, space for hosting, um, we don't want that. So you might want others, but these should do. And then I'll hit enter. So use an existing project. So since I'm logged in, it can see what I, uh, which one I'm doing. So it's about fire YouTube. This works. So I just hit enter. That works. So I'll hit enter public. That works because that what that's what um, Svelte will compile to. Uh, configure the single page app. I'm gonna say yes. Uh, I'm not positive. I haven't tried this with routing and stuff, so I could be wrong about that, but I think um, that should do it. So it says it already exists, and that's okay. We want it to already exist, so we're going to say no. Cool. So I need to Firebase deploy, but first of all, here, I'm going to stop the I'm gonna npm run build. So that way, that's what we run when Svelte is, um, we want to build it into this public directory which Firebase is knows, yeah, public, index.html. Okay, so this will take a little bit. But uh, after that, we'll do Firebase deploy, and then we should be able to access it um, from a link. And you can share it with all your friends. So that is everything. I hope that is helpful. I'm going to deploy it in a sec. I'm just waiting for this. Uh, just trying to fill some time here. Um, so I still don't quite understand everything going on in Svelte Fire, and this is just a uh, video to hopefully help you get started and be able to start tinkering with um, Svelte Fire and how that works. Uh, so the reason this is collection is because it's a collection of comments, and this collection has been created underneath uh, the docs, which is post slash uh, the user ID. And this took so long because my computer is weak and I'm running, I'm recording the video right now. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't take that long. Uh, Firebase deploy, we can now do that. And after that is done, hopefully this doesn't take forever as well. There should be a link. Um, and notice that all of this here, these Firestore files were created by initiating the Firebase. And these here, Firestore.rules are the rules we wrote in our Firestore. Okay, cool. So now this is here. We can open a new tab. And now our beautiful little app is working. Um, and you'll see here posts. So when I logged in with A, A and um, B, B, B at B, that uh, they were created as well. You can't see their email because it's still using their user ID. Um, I couldn't figure out how to make this the email, but... Um, it still works fine. You could attach, you could, yeah, you can figure out a better way to do it. But anyway, here it is. And you'll see a at a.com is still a, 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 a. I should be able to log in with that because um, it's just, it's stored in the Firebase. So there's no like local database and production database. It's just all the, using this one database. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm really loving this. Hopefully I will learn about it more, use it more. Um, and then I can make some nicer projects with this, but this is just kind of the bare minimum of how to get it set up And now you can start doing your own tinkering. So please let me know how it goes. Please like and subscribe and That is all for this video. Bye